All right, good evening and welcome to Football in Vivo on Club Deportes, show number 23. We air every Monday, unless we're airing on Tuesday because of technical difficulties on clubdeportes.com. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter, at Football Austin, that's F-U-T-B-O-L Austin. Follow Club Deportes, at Club Deportes, for all the latest and greatest sports news and commentary well, you got to go to the favorite website of David Alvarez. That's clubdeportes.com. I am your host, <laughs> Eric McCoy, and I am joined by a man who says, who needs Emiliano Ragoni when you've got Rodney Redes? It's David <laughs> Alvarez. <laughs> Welcome oh to the show, God, David. Rigoni. Hey, that was good. That photo of me was the first one to confirm that. Uh, well, the first I one. I don't know if I so, want to take credit for that, David. You could. Uh, <laughs> that, those are the words of David Alvarez. Not idea. the opinion of football and vivo as a whole, or club deportes as a whole. Yeah, uh, I saw it there. Anyways, okay. As you guys can probably tell, there's no Jorge Chavez with us this week, but instead we have Richie and Coque from the Otra Por Favor podcast joining us. So How are you guys doing? Jorge Chavez would be very mad by your choice of, uh, of jersey there. Uh, well, unfortunately for my tocayo, um, <laughs> I, I got I to rock what I rock, man. That's know? a valuable lesson for Jorge Chavez. <laughs> Never call out of a show. Never call out of a show if you don't want to see a uh, Mexico jersey on the so show. You're going to get a better version of a Jorge. There you go. A little bit more handsome, a little taller, a little darker. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea what this guy looks like. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you a picture of him later. <laughs> well, okay. Well, it's great to have you guys on. You guys great host... to be on, man. Great to be on. Oh, man, yeah. So you guys host the Ultra Por Favor podcast. It's available wherever you like to get your podcast, Spotify, Apple. Uh, you guys want to talk maybe a little bit about kind of what you guys do with that show and just kind of give our, our uh, viewers here just kind of the down low on what you guys yeah, basically, our, our podcast is a platform where we want to open up conversations about football, life, and culture. A um, couple yeah. of handsome-looking guys right there. Cookies, all the budgeting goes yeah. in Cookies looks. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> we only afford the Patito shirt. <laughs> and, and, yeah, so, you know, every time we have a guest, we want to highlight their, you know, their story and get to know them more. And, and then from that, you know, build a good episode and, Talk, drink while we're there. So I think that's nice, nice. That's it. That sounds like that a nice. He was supposed to bring the beer, but he. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, come hey, on, man. Dierra mate only. No, no, no beer. <laughs> in in uh, some of our latest episodes, we've had uh, Alicia and, and Bocha Fagundes, uh, Diego Fagundes's parents, and and that one was a really special one because they they got to take us a little bit into the upbringing of Diego and the wow. sacrifices that were made to come to this country and play and and have his career in football start at such a young age. So. It's just moments like that that we get to highlight a little bit of the, the backstory to some of the figures here in Austin and, and community members that make it so special. That's awesome. You guys have had some big guests on the show, right? You've had uh, Jeremiah Bentley. Bro, I know it's right. been on, right. on the show. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Oh, look at that. There we go. I believe uh, one Jorge Itzeralde has also been on the show yes. as well. Yes, yes sir. Illustrious Jorge. <laughs> it was fun, man. I, we got the same with him. Like we, There were some stories where nobody knew about like. And being a DJ and taking over places. So what, Diego Fagundes a DJ? No, uh, Jorge Turralde. <laughs> Whoa, Jorge Turralde. Tur yeah, he was, hey, he's he holding yeah, on. He's a history, pretty the illustrious. The reason why wow. Open Espanol is big in Austin is because of that guy right there. Wow. Yeah. So it's just moments like that that you get to discover yeah. a little bit more that from the surface you don't see. So Yeah. And I think like we don't we don't like to do like, oh, exclusively or here or we have the, uh, like the, Nobody knew about this. We just want to, you know, people share it. That's cool. We don't ever want to be the, the ones that are like, oh, I said it first. No, nah, that's not our thing. Yeah, thing David to, likes know. to do that. I'm definitely not like that. So <laughs> I'm more like, <laughs> show me, you know, let's talk. I give him beer yeah. and then. Well, that usually helps, doesn't it? It yeah. usually helps people open up a little bit. Right. When right. you crack a few beers open. We should have you guys in there one day, man. Hey, I, hey, I, would, I would absolutely love to, love to be on. For I would sure. be honored. I would be absolutely well, honored. Well, we're honored to be here, man. Tell yeah. us a little bit about what we're going to talk about. Well, we're, we're going to talk about Austin FC. Yeah. I, I hope you guys know a little bit about Austin FC. Course, I'm assuming you do. do. Yes, sir. Uh, so let's say, uh, hey, that, kiss the badge. I love it. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and uh, Jerry, our, our good pal Jerry back there. He's going to pull up the uh, the starting lineup for Austin FC's most recent match, a 2-0 win over Sporting Kansas City. 
Um, were there any surprises in this starting 11 for you, uh, Richie? We'll start with you. Any surprises there for you in this uh, starting 11? The, not a surprise, but the only constant switch that I see is between Ethan Finley and uh, Owen Wolf. But other than that, it's pretty consistent what we have seen, what works out for everyone. So I think that that's what a uh, it was a good, it's a good lineup. I mean, it's, it's who do you prefer, Owen Wolf or Ethan Finley down that right wing? Man, it's just it, it might not matter anymore because Ragone seems like that's probably going to be where he posts up. Mm. Uh, but in general, are you a Finley guy or a Wolf guy? I am a Finley guy. But then if he's doing bad, I'm a wolf guy. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it depends. For me, it's like, hey, as long what as have you done for me lately? Yeah, what have you done? I think both of them, you know, they've been subbing, you know, switching them pretty well. So that's the one tough, align, like, precision that I feel like we've been struggling with because ever since, you know, Cecilio left, you had to switch Diego to the left. So Diego's spot was, you know, right there. But I think this, both of the guys – Owen Wolf and Finley, they've been doing a great job or the best they can to fill in the gap. That's, that's huge. I mean, not, not for, for, for the Cecilio Dominguez part, but huge for the Fagundes part. Interesting. So you actually think, are you, I'm just kind of guessing here by what you're saying, that you, do you think that when Ragoni comes in, he actually might go to the left and that might move uh, Fagundes back to the right wing? That could happen. Um, we can also, you know, Corozo's out there too. So yes, we have yes. another wing. In Teralde, a huge fan of Washington oh, Corozo. Oh, yeah. He's bought his jersey already. A huge fan yeah. of, of uh, uh, he's he got. Was, I think I said on, on our previous show, he actually has a picture of that bicycle kick assist just framed in his, uh, in his house. Completely right now, intentional bicycle kick. He meant Absolutely. The greatest assist in MLS history. The greatest <laughs> assist there's, in there's two <laughs> pictures of, of uh, Iturralde. One, whenever Danny's shooting it in Houston. And the scores, and then the other one with Corozo doing the bicycle. <laughs> it's his two favorites right there. Uh, okay, let's go ahead. Uh, if, if you can, Jerry, pull up the highlights. Let's get right down to it. Wow. Yeah, probably going to be a lot of fouls Peter in, these, in these highlights. Yeah, Peter Vermees. 14 Vermees. season. A fixture. A fixture, <laughs> a fixture of the MLS. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, he has been the 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 I think they forgot about time. him. They, he's just there. They, they, they don't even know he's still coaches. <laughs> this guy's Kansas. still on the payroll. What's going on? Oh, what a, what a move by uh, Oh, Ruti. wow. What a beautiful Picture goal. perfect now, finish. Now, that this was, was a recurring the theme, the offsides flag. <coughs> we saw yes. quite a bit of this. So right. he, went, he put it around the corner. That was gorgeous. That was beautiful. Kansas City seemed to be playing the offside trap to near perfection mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the first half. Um, I think there was, what, three goals in the first oh. half that were called back? That one right there, Fagu could have hurt That's back, right. man. Yeah. yeah. Post. But you always got to be careful it, there. What a ball. All the yeah. play was, was, was good. Again, wow. Finley was a beautiful finish, too, no matter what. It was, it was a beautiful finish. He put it right on the corner. So, Koke, you actually think we should be praising um, Sporting Kansas City for the, this, like how they played the offside trap? You think it was actually just good defending on them? It wasn't just fortunate <laughs> that all these kept being flagged for offside? I think it's a system that they, that they definitely practice, and it was working. It was working for them, but anytime you get scored on and you're relying on a ref to put their flag up, I think it's a, it's a bad strategy. So I wouldn't praise them, but they just happened to get lucky using that strategy, and we had a lot of goals called back. Um, that being said, I mean, little by little, uh, they started losing their head, especially with this, uh, this red card by, by Duke. Yeah, young yeah. guy. That Two reminded yellows me a lot. in four minutes. It, it looked a lot uh, like Danny. But look at that ring. <laughs> hey, was look at that. That back. was, a, I think, that was a beautiful gift. And like, it felt like <laughs> well, we were Andrew. Doing, we were that was a, a charm impression. Andrew, Andrew, right there. Andrew, yeah, it I'll reminds me of Andrew. I'll take like it. Last time, <laughs> it was such a. I mean, the ball like bounced like twice or three times before he got to him. Look at look at this. Okay. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Oh my God, dude, that's that's a gift. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was a beautiful gift. And, and this one, I mean, I mean, it gave way too many yellow cards for me. Yeah. Like it was unnecessary yellow cards. Even, even, even that red card should not be in it. I mean, was, that was this a, a penalty hand. for you, David? Yeah, oh, yeah. Easy. It's, a clear, it's a clear penalty. Well, well, how, arm outside of the body. He, 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 what, he didn't start, Felipe. Why, why did he? 
Well, I think the substitution of Felipe came because uh, Dani Pereira had a yellow card, mm. and as well as Cascante had a yellow yeah. card, so they put Romagna in as well. So mm. Wolf was like looking at that ref and knowing that he, he's, he's like sooner right, or later. We already got like <laughs> Pereira, but this it's, was a great save. I mean, because moment of the match. Come right on, here. Stuver, this excellent. Would've, this would have excellent. Changed, this wow. would have changed the game. It would have. Wow. It would have been a real hard end to a game. I think we'd be he very mad so well right right now right. doing this right. show if that goal had gone in. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I tell you what, man, like I know I've heard of like the episode the right now from the in corner. the past where David mentions about Stuber not being the best with his feet, which that could that, be that's got you quite a bit of criticism. But however, <laughs> however, like he's still a good goalkeeper. Like, yes. Oh, oh, he, he, and I mean, there's moments like this where you need the goalkeeper more than an actual player. And this is one where it, so this, many. this goal by Diego that was called off was super close. It yeah. was super close. Maybe just like, like a half foot a foot. Ahead. Yeah. It's like we have more. Yeah, that was a beautiful team yeah. goal as well. Yeah, it's it such was. a shame that that got called off. That's the other one. But this was just a classic. Yeah. It's just a, make, it, make it a classic. It. Without him, you know, he's just like the MVP. He just does. And Do you think he's the MVP of the whole league? But you know, then he had, he had, he had two the shots with the left, pretty yeah. close shot with the left. Yeah. I mean, you don't see that often. And he, he, then he had this beautiful goal. I mean, not, not many players do that. So he's the MVP of the whole league. league. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's our MVP, MVP is MVP everything the MVP because without Rusi, we he, wouldn't be here yeah. talking about now it. He, you know, it's like, he deserves. Yeah, no. he's not only the goal leader, but he's the person that's making the most difference for his team and has completely changed the face of a, a, a of a of a club. So right. for sure, he's my MVP, and I think the league is starting to recognize him as like a true MVP candidate. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think he's definitely starting to get quite a bit of. Na- <laughs> Made of the match. <laughs> now this is that uh, a bit of a not sure. I don't know about this. <laughs> well, you know, I've got a lot of a lot of love for him. You know, so yes. a lot of love for him. Like some of my friends. Really admire that the way he tackles. Mm-hmm. He's a really good tackle. Oh, no, I, very substantial. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan and of him as well. This, uh, and his uh, assist. Right. He has been very efficient at taking the ball away. You know, he he's efficient for that age. And I'm a fan of him as well. However, I think because of the decisiveness of Stuber in that penalty, Stuber should have been. The man of the match. Like I, is that a joke that almost say Matthew? Only he came out of the 58th minute. Yeah, I, can't I don't. Believe it. Does it make to sense? To be honest, I don't really recall him doing a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, know. Stuart did pretty good, but you know, the, 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 that it was not right on the corner. Like, mm-hmm. you, you, you should put it right on the corner. You know. so I want to ask you guys. So we we saw the the previous match, New York Red Bulls, Andrew Tarbell, horror show. That was not that was not a nightmare good situation for at him. all. Yes. Those first fifteen minutes were like. God. Yeah, it, it was rough. Even before the real first goal. Even before, yes. There were several offsides goals that kind of let us know trouble was it's on like the way. It's like deja vu right? other way right it, now, it, right? I, <laughs> I agree, David. Now, to, to you guys, I want to ask all of you this. Uh, we'll start with you, David. Brad Stuber, just how indispensable do you think he is to this team? Boy, he has become very indispensable with the example of what happened when he's not, in the, when he's not playing with us. You know, we lost all those games with L.A., with – with New York, with San Antonio. So even though you don't like how well he plays with the ball at his feet, you still consider him an indispensable member to the team. Chance. That was an insane opinion, right, guys? He, he's, he's pretty good with, with the ball at his feet. We received comments on our YouTube videos, criticizing <laughs> <laughs> Negative comments. He's, got, he's gotten better. I mean, he's gotten better. Uh, yeah, but, feet. you know, he's done a good job. I mean, he, he, he made huge mistakes, you know, against Seattle. It's, I mean, he, he had his bad days, you know, but... So far, so good, you know, so far. Like, at this moment when the team really needed, he's there. And so that's what he counts right now. So, and he's the leader of the team. So and, and I got you, along with You guys would both agree Stuver pretty indispensable right now. If you were to go down with an injury or something and we had to depend on Tarbell yeah, for this I, playoff run, that would be very, I, I would. Be I would good. absolutely agree. I think the only other person more indispensable than Stuver is probably uh, Drusi, of course. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. The, the the feeling of having Stuber as your keeper, it just it gives that whole back line the tranquility to know that they have Stuber to have their back. And when we looked at that game uh, with uh, New York Red Bulls, like I'm pretty sure that once the first couple of mistakes that Tarbell did, his entire back line was just thinking like, I got to be yes. on my A game because yes, if yes, one yes. mistake, this guy's already shaken mentally. So. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, it does worry me a little bit because if we want to make a playoff run, um, 
if if Stuber were to get hurt, anything would happen. You would have to depend on Tarbell. He'd have to step up. But um, hopefully, we don't we don't run into that um, running into the playoffs. Yeah, I think that's such a good point about just like how much more comfortable the back line looked mm-hmm. playing with Stuber behind him. Because yeah, with Tarbell, you could tell after those early mistakes, even before like David said, even before the actual goal itself. Mm-hmm. He was making mistakes, and man, it just seemed to really unsettle Gabrielson and and, and It did, it did, it did. Yeah. Okay. So let let's let's take a step back and just kind of assess this performance overall. Um, was this a good performance from Austin FC, especially considering they were going up against ten men, ten men on on the worst team in MLS, Sporting KC, yet that man advantage for the entirety of the second half, and you only just get that second goal right at the end. Was this <laughs> Uh, a poor performance overall, or was it, you know, good enough, considering they got the 2-0 win? I have this saying, and it's always going to, like, every time you win this type of games, pinche pero seguro. Like, you know, okay, it was not the best, but you got your result. I think that's what matters, and you can build from that. Um, it would have been bad if we were winning and they came back, or, you know, they tied last minute with 10 men. So this, is an, this, is, this shows that the team is there to, striving to win. I think that that's important. But they need to also learn, like, hey, you, you have to be, you know, c- concentrated when you're playing, especially away, um, especially even, even at home. I mean, there's been times home games have been probably the toughest one for us than, than away games because we're winning more away games than home games. Yes, yeah, so I was going are winning a lot more on the road. Is, is there any reason behind that, do you think? Man, I, I feel like the players are more relaxed away because – they think everything, you know, all the, all the you know, the props are for the supporter sections and everything. But whenever you have, you know, like a, like, a, like a hard drum beat, you build your own pressure. And I feel like sometimes they, they, they come in a little like, damn, we have to show up. Like we have to come through and we have to, you know, do everything we can for, for this, you know, for our fans. And that could be mentally where like you, you worry about that, but you don't worry about like, okay, the game started, we have to play because – Several of the game, the the goals that we've gotten scored, they've been first five minutes, first. Yes, five a lot of early goals. So a lot of early goals have been conceded. I, I do think when they play away, they're more calm. They're more like, hey, you know, we're we're up, we're going up the hill, so we have to just keep climbing, keep climbing. So I think that's a really interesting point. Do you guys think there's anything to that? That perhaps just the just intensity of the home support that it might actually be putting some pressure on Austin FC players and making it more difficult for them not to make mistakes at home? Um, to, to Richie's point, I, I understand how that environment could maybe create pressure, but I think it it's more the fact that we're playing at home and players are more confident that they'll get that result, even though the data shows... Perhaps that a bit overconfident that they're yeah, going to get they, the result. They're, they're overconfident at home. They feel like we got the fans behind us, the energy... The, the the 12th the 12th man if you will um but i think like like you were saying a lot of the goals they scored at us have been in those f- in that first part of the first half so I, that that goes to show you that they, they don't come with the right mentality in the beginning of games and are always have to fight from behind so mm-hmm. um yeah i don't know that's that's a what good you, question what do you think david no 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 I, so i'm just thinking that it is Couple of the games that I would love to have this uh, lineup in the previous game, right? right? Mm-hmm. Start this really? lineup. This lineup was strong. This yeah, was it was a good lineup. Yeah, yeah, very good lineup. So that's what I kind of miss. So that's why we okay, we're learning. So we're learning. I mean, I mean, this is like learning, and we play with Kansas City. Right? They 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 had forty eight percent possession. I mean, they mm-hmm. were in control. They have more shots on goal than we did. Yeah. So um, I, I mean, it was pretty even there. I mean, there's not. I mean. Usually we have way more control, right, over yeah, every it, other team. It wasn't a pretty match at all. Yeah. No, no. And then before, I mean, I, I think the referee was a factor, you know, the first half. You, so you and Josh Wolf agree on something because in the post-match press conference, he that brought referee, up the officiating was, was a big part of why this game was this, so yeah. perhaps unpleasant, I think it's fair to say, for, for the viewer to watch. And Do you agree with that, that the referee was the, the referee, reason why he, this was? He make it, he, you know, the game was interrupted every other constantly, like, right? Like, constantly interrupted by the referees. Like we didn't have a flow, especially in the first half, giving three yellow cards and then the red card. I mean, I mean, some exaggeration. Most of the stuff. I mean, 
Let him play, guys. Don't, don't stop the game. A lot of yellow cards. Don't Way too many yeah. yellow can, cards can, 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 you, can you imagine this referee in the Premier League or Syria? Like, but the guy was <laughs> like... Everybody, 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 everybody would not be thrown out. Don't eat. Don't eat. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think him running that much. He would, not, he would not have a job. And, and the thing is, like sometimes I feel like a lot of the MLS referees, they're too technical. Like, say, they don't know the game well to actually let it flow. I agree with you on that, yeah. Because... They lose control so easily, right? Right, right. You know, you know, we don't have like. They, sometimes it's their job, but it's not like their passion. I would say, like say with with referees from other parts of the world, Latin America. Yes, they're not the best, but at least they understand. Like, hey, you know, yeah. this shit's getting out of hand. Let me start. Let me calm this <laughs> yeah. thing down. So. Only showing the yellow cards when, when needed. I think if you start yeah. throwing those early yellows out, it, and then all of a sudden yeah. every foul becomes yeah, a yellow, yeah. you and make you make your own bar at the beginning. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I and thought that was a, a red card for us because we already had three yellow cards. Right? I was like, oh, that's uh, that's ours. So like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, there's so many players who run yellow, he pulls out a red. Yeah, you don't know who it's yeah. going to go to. Yeah, Do you guys count. think Wolf got it right, though, taking off Pereira and Cascante oh, yeah. at half yeah. to avoid any unnecessary Especially red cards? Especially Pereira, man, because my boy Pereira, he... Okay, he, I actually have a, a he question. He gets out of hand sometimes. I, okay, I want to ask you, Richie. So, Pereira picked up the yellow card, subbed up at half. This was his eighth yellow card of the season. That is by far the most in Austin FC. Also has two red cards. Now, Pereira is one of my favorite players. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love... Watching him is what he does in midfield on the ball is just so special for this team. But is his discipline is that becoming a real concern? Because we need the guy to stay on the pitch, right? You need him, especially because you have to think. Okay, now we're have to, we're on top of the, you know the table, and we're more than likely going to make it to playoffs. And that be, I mean, Jorge, Jorge Torrele said he will cut a ball if we don't make it to playoffs. I mean, there. So, <laughs> wow, that's a. Uh, <laughs> that's, really? Uh, however, now, now going back to this, you have to understand that once you get to this playoff moment, how you did at home matters. How you played away matters. The yellow card part matters because if you're losing your shit and you're losing two to one and it's been at 85 and we need you and you know you commit a foul that gets you in a in a, in a place where you get a yellow card, then I think. He has to wake up and be like, oh, shit, I can't be constantly. You can be competitive and you can have the intensity, but you also have to stay calm. Do you think this is something that, I mean, this is still just his second season as a Mm -hmm. professional. Do you think this is something he can kind of learn and improve upon as he gets more experience? He should. I think he should. I think this eight yellow cards should have you, should be a lesson for you to learn, like, hey, you know what? What can I do to change it? Because some players never learn. Like a Sergio Ramos has still not figured out how yeah. to not get in trouble but, with the but referee. But then if his style, I mean, I think he just needs to be smarter. If he, if he knows enough, he play play more rough, then he just needs to stay more calm. Yeah, the difference, I think, between Pereira and, and let's say, a Sergio Ramos is like, I, I feel like Pereira's um, uh, intensity is not as, it's not really malicious. He's just... You look at him, you look at Pereira's stature and his like physical composition, and he's competing in the midfield against players that are a little bit bigger than him. He's going to use his hands, he's going to use his arms, and he's going to make those fouls that are kind of tactical to stop a counterattack. Mm-hmm. So it's already super prone to being booked. But I think uh, with time and, mat- and, and maturity and kind of study, he's going to get better. And one thing is, I think the root of the cause and why he gets yellow cards is because sometimes the mistakes in the back when you're making a pass. Mm-hmm. When you give him a pass that is, you know, out of, you know, like out of space, then that's what matters because he's trying to catch up to get to the person that intercepted Intercept. pass. I think that's a really good point. A lot of times as a defensive midfielder, it's not really your fault that you're the one that's picking up the yellow mm-hmm. card. It's mistakes around you that are causing yeah, you to have right. to be the guy that picks up the tactical foul while you're grabbing the, the attacker's jersey or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, like mm-hmm. Jimenez, is, like say the one time he got the red card, it's because Jimenez. Yeah. So yeah. I think, we, yes, he will learn, but however, we have to look at, you know, like, hey, what are we doing to help him not get to that situation? Absolutely. I think you bring up a good point that, yeah, this isn't like a Sergio Ramos just, like, clashing into people, just yeah. being way too aggressive. No, it's just kind of these, like, little mental mistakes and, yes, mistakes of others around him. Right. Now, David, what are your thoughts on this? I know Sergio Ramos is one of your favorite players to ever play <laughs> I mean, the sport I, of football. I mean, especially after the the back heel um, goal that he scored, like, a couple of days ago. Three, did you see the goal that was I, gorgeous? I did. I didn't see Back that. heel, like. 
I'm I not as up to date on the news of Sergio Ramos as you. So I, I mean, he was a Messi celebrity. I mean, it was like <laughs> whoa, invoking was, Messi's uh, day. You know, they, they they used to be rivals, kind of, yeah. but they, everybody yeah, was hugging. Like each other. No, oh, they 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 love each other now. Well, I mean, that was that was going to fight in that in that practice when. But almost got messy. <laughs> no, they didn't get in the fight. But I, I think that's the video I've seen yeah. circulating more. It's like a, a, a little uh, scrimmage amongst yeah. the PSG squad. And, yeah, Ramos got messy in a foul, but Messi still manages to get around him and get the goal, and he kind of looks at him like, what the fuck <laughs> <Messi> is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, not typical. much has changed. Yeah. Not much has changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Messi gave him the death stare, but, nah, I don't know, man. Your, your, your thoughts on uh, Pereira, though, David, is, yeah. uh, is the discipline a concern for you? I mean, it, it is a concern because usually that it usually goes into the coach, you know. Like when really? As a coach, what would you do with, with a player like this who's so talented <laughs> but just seems but to you keep too many, getting in trouble It's like way too many times. I mean, yeah. because you really disrupted the game, like making the substitution, putting Felipe in there. So you don't uh, agree with the move to, to take off Pereira when he had the yellow card at half? I mean, it's just like it was too painful for the team, you know? Like, like what, what do we get? I mean, I mean so he is well, – you need him there. You need him there. I think Pereira is – we need somebody else. But, you know, he, would, he just like – I think he's playing really good and uh, we, we depend on him. But, okay. yeah, he needs to be – he needs to be – Disciplined by that, you know, because you cannot leave the team like that. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Might have a suggestion. I'll get you guys' thoughts. We've talked about this a couple times on this show. Pereira and Ring, why not switch those roles around? Ring has been made his name in this league as just one of the best defensive midfielders in mm -hmm. MLS. Why not put him back at the six and put Pereira higher up where you can use some of that dribbling in the final third, Ross FC really lack a you know creative dribbler that can kind of beat defenders. Put that a little higher up the pitch, and he's not playing as deep, so he's not picking up these tactical mm -hmm. yellow card fouls. Do you, do you think that might be an option, or am I am I talking crazy here? No, I think you you have a good point because last season it was where Ring was the defensive. Yeah, Ring was the, as he's so been he for his knows, entire MLS I mean, that's career. A, that's been you know he's that's his position. So. I think that switch would be good. Uh, you let Pereira to do more of that dribbling, more creating, and you take away that creating part from Ring because Ring had a very rough time at the beginning of the season. He did. There were so some high-profile missed chances. Doing a lot better. Yes, I, I think yeah, he has season, improved. For sure. He uh, he struggled in that you know creating part. So a good problem for us is we have two players that can be dual like plurifuncionales. You know, you can be dual dual work. You can switch it, and you won't really notice the change. I think that's right. I think it's a good way to view it. It is a good problem to have. Are you guys interested? I, I think he's about to come back from injury. Johan Valencia, does, does mm. he interest you, Koke, as, as possibly being uh, a starter, or do you think he's just going to be more of a rotational piece once he comes back? No, I definitely I, – I think he's he's better as a rotational piece. He gives our squad that, that added depth in the midfield that is going to be necessary, um, especially with different situations in the game. For example, this one that just happened, I would have rather uh, a Johan Valencia go in than a Felipe. That's just yeah, 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 no, yeah, no, I, yeah, I agree. So it's exactly what I was thinking, you know, like yeah, you read my my mind, but yeah, and and that that will be helpful for that. That we need we need we need that because Felipe has been very weak in many in all of the all the he, games. He had that they one were, good game where he scored a couple goals, right? Atlanta, he was Atlanta. really good. He Atlanta. Atlanta. I guess Atlanta. Yeah. Right. And then after that, he after went that, yeah, down. And 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 yeah. So, so what, what do you guys think? So uh, this week, I think, these last two matches, I think, have actually shown us a couple of recurring themes. Last week, it was Austin FC struggling to play through a high press. This most recent game against Sporting KC, I think the issue that was there was just a struggle to play against a low block. You know, Sporting mm -hmm. KC, they get that red card. They go to that kind of 4-4-1, very, very deep. All those two banks of four sitting very much right in front of their goalkeeper. And I think we've seen Austin FC really struggle to break down teams that like to sit deep defensively. Yeah. Uh, Got an important call there, David. <laughs> His agent is on the agent, Josh Wolf calling you. Huh? Your old pal, Josh California, Wolf. California, I think it was Chicharito was calling you. Oh, okay. You might be looking for a job. You won't uh, give me an autograph, Mr. <laughs> but, um, I'll ask you, Koke, like, what, like, why does this Austin FC team seem to struggle so much when they're going up against a team that, that's sitting deep like this? Well, I, I think like anything, so any time a team pushes back into their own half and is defending – with 
almost their entire squad. It's going to cut a lot of those spaces out. And we're a team that likes to have the ball, that likes to move it around. So when it's just a, when it's just lateral movement and you can't actually penetrate those those lines because they're so tight, it can be frustrating. Mm -hmm. So then what do you do? You start depending on, like, crosses, maybe it's some long shots there. But um, – our, our game is more free flowing. It's not, it, it, it struggles when it when it has to um, uh, really kind of try to build something with a team just completely thrown back, like uh, we were seeing with Kansas City. Absolutely, and I, I think you're right. I think there 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 is a lack of being able to kind of penetrate these these deep blocks. And man, I don't. I have to say, I don't know a ton about Rigoni and what exactly profile of player he is. Perhaps you guys can maybe enlighten myself and our and our viewers about him. But the skill I hope he has is, man, I hope he can beat defenders off the dribble. Because I think that's what this team needs in the final third, is just somebody that can get on the ball, take defenders on, beat their man, and then get a cross off or get a shot off. But create some space that away. Um, and so I'll ask you guys, what do you, what do you guys think about the Rigoni signing? That was, as of last week, we were 99%. We were at 99% for like two weeks on getting this thing across the line. Still loading. It was still loading, exactly. <laughs> uh, but finally, it is complete. Uh, but we'll start with you, Rich. Are, are you a fan of this Rigoni signing? DP, so expectations will be high. Yeah, I mean, I think um, one is he comes with, the, I mean, he comes with uh, you know, I would say part of the, you know, like Koke was saying earlier, we were striving to sort of build the team around Druzy. So having a player that he already knows, especially our MVP, that helps a lot because he's not going to come in blindsided. We're like, you know, what the heck is going on? He's more like, okay, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we have going on. This is what we need you to do. Can you do this? I, th I think that, that will help out. Um, I don't know, like I said, when Druzy came in, how much did he know about the team, the struggles, what we were, mm -hmm. you know, we needed. So I feel like him coming in, if he's an addition, why not? Um, and hopefully he's not another CD <laughs> problem. I think. Or can we all agree that we're happy that that, that oh, hey, person who shall remain nameless is, is no longer Hell on yeah. the team? Any, any <laughs> no, um, arguments there? I, I just hope he's uh, he comes with a lot better attitude than what we had when we had Pochettino. Yeah, another, ah, yeah another, that, that's a David Alvarez favorite right there. Uh, uh, he, another yeah, player that, 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 <laughs> that was on our squad that we, ex we had such high expectations and that we saw small glimpses of, of quality, but for the most part, it was someone that uh, wasn't giving their, their heart and soul on the, on the pitch and was creating a division in the locker room. So I don't think we'll get that problem with Rigoni when it comes to that locker room aspect just because he's already good friends with Dirusi. Um but I just hope that, I just hope that how he fits in the field uh, benefits the team. And what I've read about him is that he 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 can do uh, he's left footed and right footed. He can put he Play puts quality ways. crosses in, so that kind of gives him that dual functionality. Mm -hmm. And I think he he would be a great addition to the team. Yeah, absolutely. Are you guys concerned that he's not having the best of seasons this year? I think he's just on two goals is all he has with with Sao Paulo, which is not, well, not great. But I know, and, and, and I saw the comments by, by, by the Sao Paulo fans uh, about him, and, and they have a lot of respect for him. You know, he just didn't, yeah. with a new coach, you know, he didn't just have didn't any click. Hurt. It didn't click. He yeah. didn't, didn't click. Yeah, so, but Hernan Crespo was the previous coach. Yeah. Former, yeah. former Chelsea player, Hernan Crespo. Yeah. And, and, and not, he got along quite well with him. Exactly. And then, but that does, but it shows that people want him. Like people in Sao Paulo, the, the fans, they still say, hey, well, good luck. In, in whatever you do, and you know, the, all the doors are open for you. You know, like the, the people saying that. Mm -hmm. is, you good. say something that he also it was a very nice. Uh, everybody loves him in the, in, in the locker room, so he well well loved, and I think he will fit nicely with that. And playing in São Paulo, you have to think São Paulo playing in Brasileirão. The league is really, really, really tough yeah, to be. I mean, yeah. you got to be playing the top top level to be in São Paulo. I mean, it's one of the top team in Brazil. And and to be there, it's just a big big deal for us, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So he struggled this season, but yeah, last season I think he had eleven goals, is, is what he had with with, uh, with Sao Paulo, and yeah, to do that in a very tough league. Everybody's like gonna said. have the yerba mate now, you know. They're gonna have the yerba mate. <laughs> yeah. Not the combos. Yeah. Not the combos. Yeah. They're gonna need more room, man. They're gonna need yeah. more. They're gonna need a bigger table. Yeah. More, so more mate. It seems like there is a lot of connection over there, you know. They're yeah. sharing the passion for football, you know. Yeah. No, I think I think. Uh, one thing that we, we mentioned several times is, you know, this team is made out of misfits or recycles. 
Yeah. Because everybody's having a yeah. very rough time in the past, and they come here and they get like a sicker, like a breath of fresh air. Austin FC, so man. I feel like yeah. hopefully this happens with Rigoni. I, but I, I have to get, say something about that. You know, like many South American t- players, uh, many times they don't feel so welcome in the team. See, like it's hard to adapt to cities yeah. and mm-hmm. and like a, a Chilean that play and in, in the last and the team. Uh, yeah, um, last year, a couple of years ago, he felt so welcome, even though he got an injury, like the team was so worried about him. But in any other team in New Mexico, they would just let him go. Hey, yeah, got injured now. Okay, bye-bye. But here, like, they really love, like, like the, t- the players, you know, and that's what's important for the players, the, the community that is creating right now. We even, know, like, so. uh, Valencia had his birthday last week, and Farandula Texas from Telemundo, they celebrated at Casa Colombia. Oh, you know, like nice. Something there that, you know, nice. you don't know if that happens with them, you know, and how it works with other people, like, in other cities. But over here, like, you come in, you know, you're open arms, you're welcome. Because yeah. other players have that, you know, that welcome part. Uh, the now, player, the players team. mentioned that, too. They, yeah. It's something that they don't expect. Yeah. The, the, the way Austin has received, whether it be Valencia or, or any of these players that have come, as a new signing, just the warmth that they receive is something that they're more that it is more calling to, to, to their home, to what yeah. they what like their family would receive them as. We receive them as family. So you, now now like say as they come when they get welcome, now imagine when you fuck it up. You're gonna get <laughs> you're gonna hear from everybody. Yeah, I think that that's so. what you, you spoke about earlier with maybe the, that a little bit of extra pressure when yeah, you're playing so, at home. So now the watchful eyes yeah. of David yeah, Alvarez no, no, gazing no, no, down like, on you. No, no, more so, no more so like the, that the game part, the football part, the football part. You know, you can have good days, bad days, but more so like I think outside of that because the fans here they focus on not just the football aspect, but also the you know the y'all means all aspect. Yeah, the community aspect. Community aspect hugely so, important. So I think. If, if you come in with the right mentality and you add, like, the way Drusi, Fagu, Stuber, you know, if you're, you come in with the same mentality, it'll be okay. Even if you're not doing the best. Like, Lord Redes. Lord Redes now gets a couple of praise <laughs> every Redis. now and then. Hey, man, people he's are actually, pulling for him. People want him to he's, score. Because he's like, actually, like, you know, he's well, he tries. He's, 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 he's trying. He's always, yeah, Wolf so, will yeah. always highlight yeah. in press yeah. conferences so, how hard Redes how hard works it, in yeah, training, so, which I think right. is why he keeps going on the pitch. Imagine, yeah. imagine the one game where, like, we're really, really, like, we need we need someone to win, or we need that winning score, or a tie, so we can go next, yeah. you know, side in the playoffs. Redis. And you see like Lord Redis running, no, running, no, he no, falls, no. but as he's falling, <laughs> he like he hits the ball with his head, and he just <laughs> goes through. Stop. <laughs> stop. You know how you know they're gonna have to build a statue like right next to Lucy <laughs> and Lord Redis. <laughs> I'm waiting for Lord Redis. Honestly, I want Lord Redis to score. So I, I, I think, I we all do. I I think, think the, we all do. We'll, we'll, we'll shut the stadium down. Like yeah. we're gonna have to leave the green lights on for a while. <laughs> Damn, <man. laughs> but, no, I think you know if this guy comes in. And, and wants to add, it's always going to be good. Absolutely. So you guys are kind of referencing just like the overall spirit that this team has right now. Just how important do you think that just the camaraderie and, yeah, just that overall team spirit, how important do you think that has been to the team's success this season? From the, from the team itself or the fans? or Just, the just everything, like mm. the, the fans, the team, just the overall vibes of this Austin FC team right now. So um, – yeah, that's a very good question, actually, because I can let you know a little bit of, from what I've seen. Cause, you know, doing you've got insider Murga, perspective on this. Yeah, absolutely. like doing work with La Murga and Las Verdes. Um, well, our friend Javi Pereira, he did a documentary that it's going to be releasing soon. Uh, it's already done. Uh, and a lot of the documentary had interviews of several of the, the capos, several of the, you know, the fan base, leaders of the fan base, and also Stuber and Fagu mm-hmm. were in the documentary from what i see is last season everything was all about chanting for them no matter what getting them you know high, I mean, like getting them feel like they they're supported getting them feel like they're loved so that's why you constantly would see that everyone chanting even if they were down so there's one song um incredible was one of the 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 like parts of the song says, even louder when we're down. Look, it's funny because every time we score a goal, it's around that song part. Wow. So, and that's when they're throwing beer and stuff, <laughs> and, or water now. So, that's one thing. And then, what I noticed 
Stuber or Fagundes would say, even Stuber, whenever he had a bad game against uh, Galaxy, mm-hmm. um, I asked him, like, hey, what is something you, you felt that needed to change after getting scored two goals? And he's like, man, I just, and because I, I, after he got scored on, I saw him looking at the fans and he looked like, fuck, I'm fucking it up. I, you know, I'm messing yeah. up and they're over here. I was there. Yes, that was a great yeah. question. And yeah. then he said, man, it's, it's the, I feel like they're keeping so much for us. Now it's our turn to come do our job for them. So I, this is, was their motive this season. Yes, for the team, but also for, for the fans because the fans poured so much on them last season. So for them, it was a way to give them back. And that's why you probably see all these performances and you've seen them win. Or, so it's a two-way street. I think in terms of the pitch, you, you, you have to think about the players. The players, when they're on the pitch, they're in the office. Yeah. They're, that's their work. That's their profession. But what they do off the pitch, especially together, has made a huge difference. Mm-hmm. You've seen that camaraderie grow between them. And just that trust, and whether it be on the training training grounds or um, you know having uh, birthday hosting parties together, where, where they've started to kind of click more as a family, that stuff makes a, a whole lot of difference. Mm-hmm. And you can see in just the way that they're communicating and the type of plays that they do, and when they celebrate, even their little coordinated dance celebrations, yeah, I like love it. all those like little things are 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 additives of like this big. Uh, bond that they that they're showing and do you guys think because i mean one of the things that we've seen this team is that when they go down a goal mm. they don't give up they don't give up they, they, yeah. they don't give up they just keep fighting do you think that team spirit is a big part of why they're able oh, to yeah. come back even when they're facing adversity in matches? yeah for, for sure, sure for sure um one thing that i also notice is after the games even if they lose their kids come to the pitch with the players <laughs> yeah. they do and that, yep. that and, and you see the kids like say you might see like your you know kid playing or you know joking with Drusi, Gabrielson, Cascantes kids. Um, that also has a lot to do with hey there is like you said, it's the chemistry, it's you know the like how they get along outside of you know the pitch that that helps. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I definitely think as you guys said that the fans, is the support of the community plays a huge role in this. I gotta ask you guys' opinion on this because this was such a hotly contested subject. Last season mm-hmm. on our show, it was pretty much every week we would debate one figure. You know who I'm talking about, David. Who? <laughs> <laughs> the big bad wolf. The, the guy you're afraid of in the press conferences. Yes. The big bad wolf. The gaffer. Uh-huh. I, I, yeah, the gaffer. I have to ask you guys, how much of a role do you think Josh Wolf has had in building this team's spirit? You want to go first? Uh, it's a huge role. A huge role. You, We've got we've for the record, I was never wolf out. Never. Yeah. I was never. Yeah, for, not even at the lowest point last season. I was here. considering it, but I, I never yeah. fully went on board with Wolf out. Yeah, I also felt good that they that they've given him the the second season. I think that just made the most sense to give him that extra extra season, full season with a true preseason and true ability to bring players it was hugely important. And you can tell just just at the small glimpses that we get from the marketing team, like the way that they um, their their locker room talks. It's very open, very transparent. He gives Those videos are great, by the way. Marketing videos are team, great. Con- yeah. congrats! You guys are doing a great job. He he speaks to the team very clearly, and he highlights uh, and praises like players that have made a difference. And um, he's kind of made that locker room feel uh, like everyone has each other's back. So I feel like. Definitely, he's had a huge impact on that as well. He's our, he's a leader. He's a leader mm-hmm. inside that club and organization. You know, obviously, Claudio Reyna's up here, right? But Josh Wolf, like, he's that boots on the ground, difference maker when it comes to leading the art team forward and united as he's, as he's done this season. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Richie, do you agree with uh, what Koke has said there? Hell no. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no I, healthy it's cool. It's it's cool. Cool. Talk it's fine. shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted for the Chilean national team. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, I think uh, one, one thing that Wolf has done, um, he, you said he has his players back. Yeah. Even, even in, the, like in the most toughest situation, he didn't talk shit about 
the unnamed person that we should not name again. Yeah, um, that's, that's true. He, he true. kept his cool. He was always yeah. very like, oh, he's training, he's working hard. Every time you hear him talk about a player, he's always in a way where he'll work at it, he'll work at it, he'll get better. That's what we see with Redis. We're we going to check it out. Earlier. Yeah, for example. So um, you can see whenever they play Dallas, Wolf not being in the, you know, on the bench, that kind of has an effect because of how everything was going on in the, in the, in the game. Luckily, we won, which is good. But he, he's, I think he's a, he's a mature guy, and he's also learned how to manage himself better, not just with, with uh, like the players, but also with the media. And Absolutely, I think that that's that, a huge. And, and that's a huge. And also, not, I, his not, biggest not, adversary. Is <laughs> his, he's kind of like, like, for me, like, when I used to work in a hotel, there was this one chef, like a steakhouse chef. He can seem like the, the most a hole type of person, you know, a hole personality, very cutthroat, you know, mm-hmm. to the point. But if you get on his good side and you work hard and you, you know, you put yourself out there, he'll have your back. And I feel like Josh Wolf is kind of like that chef that, you know, you make, you, you, we do everything right, I'm going to love you. We, you mess it up, I'm going to slowly, slowly not, you know, c- cut you or not cut you, but like, you're not gonna have as much opportunities. <laughs> he's gonna let you know yeah, about sure. it if you, if you, if you mess you know. up. So I mean, he's let people know, like, hey, that's a bullshit question. So <laughs> I, I think I yes, think, uh, yes, he has. I think this guy right here, he's he's learning. Sec- second season, doing a lot better than I expected. I thought we were only gonna be top <laughs> five, top six, second place. Um, a lot of that, he's also him. You know, just <coughs> he he has one thing where. Even if he's a bad day, he always has a thing where he greets people. Um, now he might have, he might be questionable in, how, in the way he talks or he answers questions, and but he does have a he's a like in Spanish it's un like he's a he's a it's a good guy. He has a good heart. Uh, that's that's what I think. Yeah, no, I definitely agree, and I think you, you bring up a good point. His relationship with the media last season. To this season, I mean, it, it's improved a lot. I think, and obviously, winning <laughs> certainly helps. He's probably in a better mood after after games more often than not this season. But yeah, he that seems a lot. <laughs> that is definitely results. It, it helps maybe, with, maybe it helps a good, that means a uh, good side. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think, yeah, I think the way that he kind of responds to, I, I've seen some some you know difficult questions asked in press conferences this season. And I think he responds much better and, and much more respectfully right. this season versus last season. David, is your blood just boiling right now as, as we For heap what? praise <laughs> on, uh, on Josh Wolf? Uh, what, what are your thoughts about it? Do you agree with what everyone's saying here? No, but, you know, we, talk, we talk about that la, la, last time, last show. You know, we, we have a big... big well, talk last about show you were a little feisty because the Austin FC lost. You're in your element. And when after a defeat, that's when we get the best version of, yeah, of David it, Alvarez. But it's just the same thing. The you good know, times are rolling again, though. So you're a little. little we talk about it, you know, like the, we, we, I wanted. I, I really don't don't like Felipe, you know, to be in that role. <laughs> so you're gonna. But you're I don't want to go in there, you know. Just <laughs> go in there, just man. Just go all in, bro. Just let it out. Let us know. Let us know. Let us know. Anyway, true. Let it out. No, but you know, I already said all say these praise about like, the spirit the, the, and all that. You're gonna have like one substitution <laughs> <laughs> that didn't even. It was fine. They won the match. No, it was awesome, man. No, <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was. It was I think awful. He should, be the, was awesome. he should be the next national. He should be a candidate to to be a, a, <laughs> a national team uh, coach. You know, he's, <laughs> we, he's we on did the discuss list. that on the last. Show. There was a, a tweet. Uh, uh, Jorge Chavez tweeted it out from our, our football and vivo Twitter account, mm. where yeah, he was listed as a possible U.S. MNT <laughs> candidate. Uh, where do you guys see him as a, as a coach that could perhaps go on? Dare I say to Bigger things beyond Austin FC, if there is anything bigger than Austin FC. No, uh, he has the potential, but this season is very important because he he has to lead our team to a good playoff run in order to be taken seriously yeah. for such position as like the, the U.S. Men's National Team head coach or a bigger bigger team. Yeah, at opinion. least you need to win. You need to at least, you yeah. need to get you gotta win. I mean, yeah. it's, it's so the playoffs, well. you think how this team performs exactly. in the postseason yeah, yeah, yeah. is really what, yeah, it, what it'll yeah. be. Yeah, about. and then also you, just getting one good playoff run as as your your second year being a coach. Some people could maybe discredit it as a fluke season. You know, you have to do it. I think one more time. Yeah. So yeah, I think he he, he has a few years left before he can, and truly get considered to be 
a, a great like a U.S. national candidate. Yeah, I, I agree. You got to prove you're not a. <laughs> there he is. Look at that. The fist pump. Absolutely <laughs> love it. <laughs> now that's what you need that's to have for you, in your house, Abby. Yeah, there you go. This would be when you walk in the door, what you see. Really <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> now, David, I know we're talking uh, the U.S. men's nationally, but, but David actually has his heart set on, on Wolf going to Chile. Like, that's his oh, ultimate dream. dream. That's no, his ultimate dream. dream. That would be a pretty and cool An attacky minded you know, coach, you know, that like to keep the 4-3-3. Three, you like yeah, the 4-3-3. Four, three, three, three. And uh, he's. Proven it, you know, when he has the players, they can do it. You know, I mean, he's being honest with, with that style of play, and kudos for him, you know, because last year we could have done it and we didn't do it. This year we have, like, when you have Lima and then Gallagher doing the long throw ins, you didn't have it last year. Do you, you, know, you like the long throw I love I love the long throw ins. This, this is why I love you, W. You always will bring up the most, like, random. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the little, and I, but it's, it's true though. The long throws are actually good. Yeah, actually, last year we were losing. I mean, and where we were, were like, just, throws? Not okay, enough. Okay, let's play back. You know, it's like, like I think a little bit of Tony Pulis. <laughs> I think it was when we played. Oh. This is what the beat is. When we played Dallas. Dallas. Oh, no. and we were Oh, losing. there you go. <laughs> and um, there was a, th- a, a Nick Lima throwing, and I I remember this because I I was watching the game and I saw. I don't know if it was an assistant coach. Or the fitness trainer literally running, and I'm like, why is this guy running? Because uh, Lima was about to throw the ball in, but he didn't want to throw that ball in because it was wet. So this assistant coach or fitness trainer, I don't know who it was from our staff, he grabs the ball and he wipes it down to make sure it's dry for like a long throw. And I'm like, this is like so. This has to. This has to be right for Nick Lima to get his long throw, and I think it even resulted in a dangerous play if it wasn't a goal. But. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the long throws too, man. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, you got to be, you know, and, and, and especially in high school that you you see every team that goes to the playoff, they have one or two guys that they always do the long Do you guys remember, like, years ago, like, Stoke City under Tony Pulis, if you don't know how far back you guys go with the Premier League, but they were always criticized for their long throws. It mm-hmm. was like, oh, this is a disgrace to the game, and these guys are just flinging it's, the ball down into the box. Yeah, just Rory DeLapp would, the would play, fling it, yeah. like, 50 yards. They would be in their own half and just launch it in it was basically like a set piece they would yeah. treat throw-ins as yeah. set pieces it is but yeah. it, it was effective was it yeah. not double effective? header usually you know what comes yeah. from it you know double headers right and you can't be off sides on a throw-in so that's another thing yeah. that's that that's a, i think a key a key component to that okay we are, are getting short on time here i want to get some no, predictions no, we have a, <laughs> i always listen to jerry jerry doesn't steer me wrong we got yeah. a tradition on this show, you guys. We do predictions. We do yeah. shots. Uh, right, let's do I, I wish, but <laughs> let's no, do it. We, yeah, we, keep <laughs> things, we keep things <laughs> professional here, Richie. We got a little. This is a, a green chicken's very popular with Austin FC. Oh, what we call this one here is the football in vivo chicken of indecisiveness. So if mm. you're not bold with your prediction, if you like predicting draws like this guy over here, well, you got to. Did I say the Austin you, will win? You did. You had predicted a tornado was going to happen during the game. So you, you did not have the chicken last week. You were very bold, even getting some, some weather predictions in there as well. Uh, but Austin FC, the next, their next game is against uh, San Jose Earthquake, 8 p.m. Uh, this coming Saturday at Q2 Stadium. Okay. Austin FC have never beaten the San Jose Earthquakes, but they're under a new coach. No more Matias Almeida. In has come Alex Cavello. They are very bad defensively. I think that's one of the key things to note mm-hmm. about San Jose. They've allowed 45 goals. That is the most in MLS. They do have some good attacking players, though. Jeremy Abobasi got 12 goals this season. Mm-hmm. Christian Espinoza, also a dangerous player. He's got six goals. So very bad defensively, Chelsea's? but they do have. They do not still have him. He's up with Pachuca now. Mm. Um, but, yeah, he was a problem for Austin FC last season. But, yeah, this team, very bad defensively, dangerous a bit going forward. Might be some goals. Uh, Richie, let's start with you. Uh, give us a winner and give us a score prediction. And, and no, in chicken of indecisiveness is, is lurking. I'll take it, man. <laughs> hey, two so, to one. Two to one. We win. Austin FC. Okay. You got any goal scorers, perhaps, that you, you think? Uh, Lord Redes. Lord Redes. And finally. Drusy. You finally have them. Always a good Always a good bet with Drusy. Hey, man. I want Lord Redes to get his moment. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh uh, okay, let, let's go with you. Who, who do you think? All right, I'm gonna be bold. But you have to hold the chicken. Okay, let, let, I'll yeah, hold the you chicken. Hold the chicken. Yeah. It's time to be bold. I'm not gonna be a, a indecisive chicken. 
I think Austin FC is going to win 5-0. 5-0? 5-0. Okay. Manita. Manita. Okay. <laughs> I think it's going to be two goals from Drusi, two goals from uh, Urruti, and one from Fagundes. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. I like it. Five. That's very bold. It's very bold. Always, always going to be welcome wow. back on the show with, with <laughs> predictions like that. That's what we like here. Okay. So I think it's going to be going to win three to one. Three to one. Three to one, and we're going to get. We're going to be start losing one zero. Like so just pretty zero. much as as usual. And then we're going to be able to get back. You know, with, and then we'll be three one two uh, one by Juicy, one by Ruti, and other by. Uh, um, our friend um, Ring, Alex, Alex Ring. Ring. Alex Ring was scored. Ring. Yeah, so I like three it. goals. He'll give you with a little wink after he scores. Like he, didn't the last <laughs> <one>. <laughs> he does. He does like the wink. Night, he, he does that for you, right? <laughs> yeah. Is, you, is you he calling you? Special <laughs> <laughs> is that who called you right now? <laughs> Alex oh, Ring. Huh? Okay. You better say my name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Bring him on the show. We'd like to have him on. <laughs> um, I am, am going to go uh, Austin FC 3-2. Yeah, I, I'm with you guys. There'll be some goals in this one. I'll go Driussi scoring two. Uh, Arudi scoring one. Um, but, yeah, 3-2 Austin FC. W- one more final question before we, we finish up here. Uh, Washington Caroso, do you think this might be an opportunity to give him his uh, first Austin FC start? Uh, just to really please Jorge Terralde? <laughs> Not start, <laughs> but he, he, you know, 30 minutes. Thirty minutes. Okay. Minutes. I, I, the thing that wor- I always worry about Diego Fagundes and his stamina because I, I think the guy has had to play so much yeah. football. Yeah, for yeah. Us you got You got to. I, like, I worry about. I gotta fear for his gotta, health. You got to. You know. You got to give him a break. Um, and if we're winning two to one, or you know we're winning, you got to switch it up and bring him in. Okay, so you, you think he'll play, but not not start. You think you'd still right, go with right. Fagundes? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. is that how you guys feel about that as well? I'd love to see Corozo. I'd love to see him play. I mean, that game where he did that famous uh, bicycle kick. The intentional, yeah. very intentional yeah, bicycle we're gonna, kick. You know, frame. Chilena. <laughs> we're going to give it to Jorge. Yeah, Jorge we call Torale. it Chilenas on, on this show, not, yeah. not bicycle Chilena. kicks. Chilena. It's, it's Chilenas. Chilenas, um, <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to see. That was like a small glimpse of something special. Like, I want to see if this is, if it's if it's something that he can contribute more to and if the opportunity lends us also, like what you were saying, if we're up. Bring him in, bring him in. Let's see what let's see what that guy got has, and then also give our give our players rest. Absolutely, David. What do you think, Washington Carozo? Does it, does he get a, a start here, or is he going to be a bench option? I think it's going to be a bench option. Yeah. Again. Okay. So we just we need, we need to see. So I'm the only minutes. one bold enough to say start Washington Carozo. I, I want to see. No, it start. I mean, okay. we need to, little by little, we need to see. We, I want we more Chilenas. Some, we need, we need, yeah, we need more Chilenas. In the <laughs> team, right? But. I mean, little by little. Chile? I mean, it's becoming a pretty Argentinian, <laughs> Argentinian. I'm, team, I'm talking about the bicycle. Oh, I'm talking about the bicycle. I'm buena suerte. No, no, but it's getting there. We're gonna get. I mean, the team is getting popular all over the world. I mean, yes, I mean, we might get some more more people. People is getting interested in the team. I mean, and look at seeing Drusi scoring so many goals. Like he, like. I don't know, man. We need to keep him. I don't know. We need to shoot that guy because <laughs> I don't know what we need to do. It's like we need to keep like, take care of him. You know, <laughs> yeah. we need to find somebody that can replace him because if we don't have him, what's going to happen? Well, hopefully, Ragoni is uh, is like a, a reasonable enough, a little bit more of a glue to keep him here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. I, I think that's a good point. Yeah, Drewsy, never leave us. Stuber, never leave us. Josh Wolf. Please, please. Oh, 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 my God. <laughs> Unless you're going to Chile, then, then that's fine. Okay, you got, hey, I appreciate you guys joining thank us you. tonight, oh, man. You. It's been so us, much man. fun. Richie, it's been okay. Great. Ultra Por Favor. You guys got to check it out. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. That, that's where it's going to be. Um, yeah, this was a lot of fun. We're going to do this again next week. Thank you to, as always, to the great Jerry Lopez. Jerry. Thank you, Club Deportes. It's been fun. Gracias, Jorge. Adios.